Salutations, my friends. Today we are here for another painting tutorial. And today we are going to be painting this cute little fall inspired number. It's a mason jar with some sunflowers in it with this little plank inspired <laughs> background or shiplap, whatever you want to call this. Um, so if you like how this looks, just keep watching. <laughs> to my channel and hit the bell notification icon and like this video that would be awesome it's with my finger I have no idea and now apparently I'm southern okay so somebody asked me to paint this um, not this specifically but on my opposite wall I have a painting of um, a mason jar with some I think it's hydrangeas in there and I did it in watercolor and somebody asked me if I could do that for a tutorial because they said they have a farmhouse um, inspired decor in their house. And I was thinking, I bet a lot of people probably have farmhouse um, inspired decor. It's very popular. So what I thought is that I would do a very, very, very um, easy. This is very, very easy for any skill level. So you can do it. If you think you can't, you can. You can do this. All you need is a paint and a paintbrush and water. That's it. You don't need anything else. Well, you need canvas or paper. I mean, I just did this one on paper, so you can even use just regular paper if you don't have a canvas or don't have money for a canvas. Um, and you don't even have to use acrylic paint. You could use anything, watercolor, whatever you want to use. Um, although it might be hard to follow this tutorial if you were using a different kind of paint. Um, anyway, so let's just get into this painting. Oh, I should probably explain why I changed it up. Well, this is um, fall inspired. So I didn't want to do the hydrangeas mason jar painting because that's a spring inspired one. So when spring rolls around, I'll do that video. But for right now, we're gonna stick with this really basic sunflower um, one. So let's just get started here before my paint dries out. Um, on my <laughs> really fancy cardboard palette, <laughs> We have phthalo blue. These are the colors you're going to need. And this is this is just for the background. Okay, and I'll put a list of all the materials and all of the colors that you're going to need um, for this painting. And if you want to switch up the colors of this, feel free. You don't have to do, you could just do like gray and white or, you know, brown and white, whatever, whatever makes your heart pitter patter. I just love the blue. I'm just a fan of blue, obviously. It's like in all of my paintings. Anyway, so let's get on with this so it's not an hour long. Because realistically, you could probably paint this in 30 minutes or less without all the talking. So we're going to need phthalo blue. We're going to need titanium white. I have two um, dollops of titanium white, and you'll see why next. And this is just a regular medium brown. Um, you can mix your own brown. I will do a tutorial on how to mix different colors coming up here really soon. Um, but there's thousands of recipes online. I will, should be able to put a link down there so you know how to mix that up. Um, I just had one. I bought a big package of different paints and it was in there so I don't have to mix my own. Um, and then just a regular primary yellow. Okay, and it doesn't matter what brand. Use whatever brand you want. Okay, and then the brush that we're gonna need right now is our number 10 flat. I don't know why I did that. Anyway, my hair is kind of in my face and sort of driving me crazy. Um, and I just kicked something awesome. This is just weird. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this entire thing, um, just this kind of turquoisey blue color. It's not exactly turquoisey. But um, I actually got this idea from another um, art tutorial. Her name is Angela Anderson, 
Um, and she has these really awesome, if you like roosters and like farmhouse inspired stuff, she has these really awesome rooster like paintings. And the background that she does the little rooster in front of, it's just like this. I mean, I switched it up a little bit, obviously. I don't want to <laughs> directly copy her. Um, but um, copying somebody is a serious form of flatter, isn't it? I just loved her idea for that. Um, so I stole it. <laughs> it's not really stealing if I'm giving her credit. Uh, so yeah, I I would link that, but then she'll see this and then maybe she'd think that's weird. Anyway, um, but yeah, just on the old YouTube kind of Google that and you'll see she's a wonderful teacher. Anyway, so we're going to mix up our yellow oh, and our blue man. and we're going to swear on our YouTube video so we don't get monetized. Okay. That's how you do it. Yep. This is how you do it. That's not the song. <laughs> this is how you do it. Okay, so let's um, just mix this blue and this yellow together. You don't have to like mix it like crazy because I do want um, it to kind of mix on the canvas by itself. And to make this easier to slide across the canvas, I would spray your canvas. I didn't do that just because of time's sake and I just, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I can just dunk it in there. But it would be easier for you if you did that. Or um, if you have a, like, a glassing medium or some kind of mixing medium, it will make your paint go across the canvas a little bit better. And you can really use any kind of brush, like any bigger, like, flat brush. Or even, um, even like, a, a filbert, like the rounded tip one. You can, it doesn't matter. Just any brush will do. So we're just going to mix this. Okay. I just put it in my white. I guess it doesn't really matter because the white's going to go in here anyway. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting mad over that. So we just kind of want like a green color is what we're going for, obviously. I don't want it super green, so I put less yellow than blue in it. Um, the ratio doesn't really matter that much. It's really just kind of like keep mixing it until you like the color. So let's just add some white in there. Let's just add all the white in there, actually, because I want this really light. And I'm probably going to actually add more white into it because this is not as light as I want it. Oh, maybe this is good. Yeah, no, this is good. I like, I do like this, how this looks. It's like very pretty jewel tone, almost. Um, I just want to start, I don't want to start out too light, because I'm just going to add white right on top of it. Anyway, um, you don't want too much paint on there. It doesn't really matter so much, but you don't want too much. So we're literally just going to take this all the way down the canvas. And like I said, it's going to make it easier. Don't forget to, if you have a stretch canvas, don't forget to paint your sides. I usually paint my black anyway, but this time I'm not. I'm just going to leave on this pretty color because I love this color. Um, I like it better if it's not totally mixed, just because then you're going to get that variation in, in shade. And like, I can already feel this not going across my canvas very well, so I'm going to add more water. And yeah, I really love like the different, you know, not having it all the way mixed. I mean, we can always add different tones on here anyway, which we're going to do. So if it gets completely mixed, it's not the end of the world. And this is going to, this is taking a lot of paint. This thing is absorbing a whole lot of paint. Leave the blue paint on there. Um, we're gonna go in with our brown color here and the same brush, obviously. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate this like on the sides and sort of on the edges. And then we can kind of drag it across the whole thing a little bit. Um, I'll show you. So you actually probably want this pretty thinned out because you don't want a huge glob of brown on there. I kind of like it to be pretty watery. So it's not, you know, you want it a little bit see-through. So this is kind of what we're looking to do. Let's just have a light, um, yeah, just like this. And you want to, you want to, you do want to do this while the paint is still a little bit wet because 
it's gonna blend better. And you can actually take like a like a dry, um, I think this made out of straw. Like one of the, it doesn't have to be made out of straw, but this will give a better texture. Um, this is an eight flat, but you can do a bigger one or a smaller one, it doesn't really matter. And just go over it and kind of blend it in more. So you don't get any of those harsh lines because this is supposed, you know, this is supposed to look like aged wood. So that's what we're, that's the effect we're trying to get. So you want your brush super wet. You want the, the paint really runny and, and watery when you're doing this. Because if you go on there with straight brown, it's going to like be a big glob of brown and it's not going to look like that. Grain. It won't really, look like a really pretty grain of the wood. It'll just look like a big blob of brown. So we'll dip in our water. Get it super runny. Like if you have a, a mixing medium or some kind of flow um, or fluid medium, whatever the heck you call it, um, mix that in with this because it'll give that, it'll be way easier than just using water. I'm just cheap and I don't want to buy it. <laughs> so like I said, we're just going to kind of, you know, you don't have, it doesn't matter where you brush it, just kind of brush it on the edges a little bit um, and run it into the center so that mixed with the other paint. And then you're going to take your other, your dry brush and you're gonna go over it. Especially these edges where it got like super. And it helps honestly, if you put a lot of paint on this, it helps when you're doing the blue or the turquoise color, whatever you wanna call this. Um, it helps it to be like a lot of paint so it mixes in. I know that sounds crazy, but it's a worked for me so far. Um, we'll work a little bit on the other side. And you don't have to wipe off your brush or anything because it just helps it mix better. So just like I said, just on the edges, kind of go on the edges a little bit. You don't have to have them any rhyme or reason. Just put it wherever the heck you want. And then you can kind of drag it in a little wherever you want to do that. And take your flat. Okay, so get your water. Make sure it's super runny. Just kind of do this really fast. Quick. Hey, babe. What's up? Can you give me icy? Sure. Let me do this brown really quick, okay? Okay, and like I said, just sort of along the edges. I said I would, I'm gonna. Oh. Okay, so then you're just gonna take your your flat here and just sort of mix that in a little bit. And so I think what we're going to do is kind of darken up these edges a little bit more, get more brown in them, because that would look nice. Water on there, and I probably won't so much go over, I'm just going to get it super like super thin. I kind of just like it to like on the edges right here. Super brown. Plus when it dries it, you will just take this on the edges. Oops, that was the wrong one. That's okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so now we can go in with our white. Um, I prefer just to use this one for the white. I'm not sure why. And we don't really have to get this super watery because 
this is pretty wet and the white should mix in fairly easy. I just worry when we use brown on there that, um, and just get a little bit on your brush and just go wherever you want like the lightness to be. Like, I kind of want some like here. And this is where I get my like light color from. And you'll also mix in some of that brown as well. And that's why I didn't want to start off with too light of a color because um, I was just going to do this. <laughs> Cute. And this is going to help it look, to look a little more aged as well, I think. Right in there. And so your canvas is already wet, so it will mix in there for you. For your canvas, I mean your... Your paint is already wet. So essentially you're whitewashing this. Like if you were doing furniture. Okay, now so dry this with our blow dryer. I'm not gonna show that part because what's the point? <laughs> so you you just want this dry for the next step. Is what I'm getting at. So either you can wait if you don't have a blow dryer, or you can. Now that can... we have this all dry, we are gonna. Um, you could measure this out if you wanted to um, to make these. I'm just gonna eyeball it, and what I'm gonna do is use this tape. Um, I would suggest actually using a smaller canvas for this painting because I think it looks better when it's little. I mean, like a big giant thing. I mean, I just use this because I had it on hand and I don't need it for anything specific. So I just used the bigger one. Um, but I actually like it like small, like an eight by 10, I think is perfect size for this. So if you wanna measure, you know, out like an inch or an inch and a half, like little plank sizes, you can, but I think it it's fun to have them um, like not perfect. You know, like if it, if it doesn't, if it's not exactly the same size at the bottom, I think, you know, that can be kind of, cute. Imperfectly perfect. So I'm just going to take some, this is just like, what do they call this? Packaging tape? Or, this isn't packaging tape. What kind of tape is this? Shitty tape? No, what is this called? It's not packaging tape, is it? No. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. Anyway, just take any kind of, like a lighter tape, like a painter's tape. Um, I can't remember what kind of tape this is called but um I'm just gonna use this to tape it off so if you have like that you know like paint painters tape and um just make the sections you no know, I think I'm gonna make my planks a little bit bigger on this one maybe well probably they're about the same try to make it as straight as possible across so this is where like a measuring <laughs> like a normal human would do would come in handy but I just, I don't want to do it. So if you were measuring, you would just take some chalk. Um, don't push too hard because you don't want this to stick to your paint. And um, you don't want this to stick to the paint and it, it will peel the paint up if your, if your tape is too strong. It looks crazy crooked. Huh. Anyway, so we're just gonna tape this off going all the way down. And you can just eyeball it like me, or you can be, if you're really, um, if you're really kind of picky about that sort of thing, uh, just measure it out. Really, you should probably measure this out. <laughs> so yeah, just take like your ruler or a measuring tape, um, and take a chalk and just, you know, divide this in half or just do, um, like an inch and a half increments or if you want an inch or half an inch or an inch and a half or even two inches wide just go all the way down and mark it on both sides so it's even and then put your tape across or you can mark it all the way across with chalk if you want but i don't want to do that because then it dries up the paint so 
You're going to need to get a little cardboard palette again. I'm just kidding. You can use a regular palette or a paper plate, whatever you want. Um, you're going to take your, um, oh, this is burnt umber. Your burnt umber, I was wrong before. I said, what did I say, medium brown? I don't know what I said. Um, it's burnt umber. You can take your burnt umber. Okay, so you have your burnt umber. You're going to just use that same, um, that number 10 flat. I'm just going to use the number 10 flat here. doesn't matter if your water is clean or dirty right now yet because you're doing brown, so we're not going to worry about it. But we are going to make sure our water is clean when we start our mason jar because you want really clear water for that. Okay. So you're just going to want a little bit of water on your brush just to make this a little bit and more fluidity. Don't have too much um, paint on there. And don't leave your brushes sitting in your water. Do not do that. Okay, so you're just gonna go on the top of your tape. And it doesn't matter if you get it on the tape, just don't make these, I mean, you can make them thicker, but don't make them too thick, because I just, I don't think they look that good when they're super thick. And you're literally just gonna go along the line this makes it super easy, easy peasy. And we're just gonna go all the way across all of them. So the harder you push, the thicker your line is gonna be. And see if you're not good at doing straight lines like me, you can tell this is all way, <laughs> at least part of it will be straight. So let's peel these up and see what they look like. Ta-da! See how I, I like I hardly even have to tug. That's because I didn't put them on there super hard. Because if you do that, or especially if your paint's not all the way dry, and you try to do this, you will literally just lift your paint right off the um, right off the canvas. And that's kind of fun, isn't it? All right, so we have our planks there. We want to, this one's a little bit thick. Um, so what you can do if you don't like like the thickness of it, if it looks too big to you, just like take one of your little, oh my gosh, I never even cleaned that off. Um, take one of your brushes and you can go back into your um, blue or white or brown, or not brown, don't go into the brown. You can take your blue or white um, I would probably use your blue and just take your little brush and kind of like wherever you think it looks too thick, just, you know, like do a little scrubby motion like that. Like right here, I think that looks too thick. So I can just kind of take some like blue or white whatever you have that's not completely dried out yet, and try to make it a little bit thinner there. See? Easy. Okay. So we want to make sure these are pretty much dry before we go in with our um, mason jar. So I'll dry those now and then that we'll come this right is dry, we can start on our mason jar. In white paint. Um, so the paint you're going to need is titanium white and a little bit of grass green. If you don't have the grass green, just mix um, like phthalo blue and yellow. Um, don't I wouldn't go for ultramarine or just any blue. Um, I would stay away from the ultramarine because that's going to make a gray tone, which I guess actually that could work. It would be fine. Um, so we are just going to use our little angled brush here. Or if you want to use like uh, a detail brush like this, um, what is this? It's a number two detailer brush. That would also work. Uh, I want this to be easy, <laughs> so I'm gonna use just this angled um, brush right here. So um, I don't know what brand this is or anything. I have no idea. It's super old. I actually got it in this like little like it was like a big bag full of brushes for like two dollars from walmart it was like crafting brushes but 
I freaking loved this brush so much. I mean, I pretty much, the rest of them, I just like threw away, you know, over time they got wrecked, but there was this little brush in there that has just lasted so long. And I actually like it better than I have like a Simply Simmons one that's just like this. And I still use this every time. And I had been using that Simply Simmons one, but, um, so you're going to want to have this super, um, super watered down. And if you have something to mix in it, like a, like a, you know, um, a mixing medium, use that because that will, that will make this way easier for you than if you just use the water, but we can just use the water today. Um, and you want it soup like when I say you want it super watery, you want it like almost opaque looking um, just because you don't want like a harsh white line. I mean, you can, that's not a big deal if it is like that, if that's what you want it to look like, you can. Um, but even just test it to make it like that to me, it's still too dark. So you almost want this like translucent is what I'm trying to say. Um, and you can do this with chalk if you want. I think I'm just gonna do mine with just the paint, just to make it easy, easy. And so we're just gonna um, start with the bottom part of the jar first. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna just do like a flat, um, line here. See that is way too bright still. And if you want to like, dull the color down, just take like a little bit of your green and mix it in with your white. So it's not like you don't have such a bright white color and make sure it's super um, liquidy. Like I was saying. <laughs> make sure you don't have too much green on there though. Wipe your brush off really well after you put that green in with that color. Make sure you have fresh water. Do not use that water from the other um, from what you were doing before because this is gonna look terrible if you do. Okay, so we're just gonna start with like a little flat line right here. Um, I'm obviously gonna make this bigger um, just because that is proportionate to this painting. So I want this proportionate to the one I'm doing. Um, so just make it proportionate to whatever size paper you, or canvas or paper you're having. And you know, you do want it like pretty much in the center. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, but just try your best to try to get it centered. Like this is probably my center here, so I made that way too far over. Um, you can just like brush that out if you want, like this with your finger. Um, that's why doing this with chalk is probably smarter. But you know, nobody accused me of that. So we're gonna just do sort of a flat line at the bottom. And what we want to do, um, instead of doing the edges now, let's just wait first, you know, because we have to make those rounded. Um, essentially, you're going to be making a rectangle with rounded edges. But we're just kind of mapping this out right now, so I don't want to attach them quite yet. <laughs> so then we're just going to come up here. Make sure of an even jar. Um, since we have that mapped out, we can do our little rounded edges here. Okay. And so now what we're going to work on is the top of it here where it curves in and then you have like the lid part. You don't have to worry about like if that like looks perfect or not because the flowers pretty much cover it up. Um, and I know this is kind of hard to see on this so I'll make sure I have this like zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing. So maybe we can figure out like how high do we want you know from the point of where our edge goes curves in to where our lid is um i probably want mine like right about 
like a half an inch above. But if you're doing this to your scale, like if you're doing this on a smaller canvas, you're going to want to make that less, you know, you're going to want to make it less that make any sense? Like you'd want one fourth of an inch instead of half an inch. And so you don't want to do like a perfectly straight line. You're going to want it like straight right there, but then you're going to kind of want it to like curve this. Oh my gosh, that is so dark. It's okay though. You can just um take a watered watery brush and just go over the line if you made it like too dark like i did <laughs> and so you're gonna want to like curve this if that makes any sense like, curve it up like that and then these edges you're gonna want them to curve in like this you're not going to want this like that. You can just fix it though. That's why it is better to do this with um, chalk. If you make mistakes like that, and you can fix it. You kind of like make a couple mistakes here. Just go in with your um, your little turquoise paint that you made, and just you know go on the edges, fix it up. Easy peasy to fix. Okay, so we have the bottom part outlined. Um, and it's okay, see how it looks kind of like, it doesn't look um, like perfectly straight, the line's kind of wavy. Uh, that doesn't matter so much because we're gonna be going over it with paint to give it the reflection to make it look like it's three dimensional. No. Okay. Um, that doesn't matter so much if it's um, not super translucent because the flowers pretty much cover it. Um, so you can work with a thicker consistency. It doesn't make it easier a little bit. Um, so it, it being super watery. Okay, so you're going to want to... What, where are you going? You're gonna wanna um, just come up like this, and then at the very tip of this, and you, this is gonna be like about one fourth of an inch. At the very tip of this, um, they don't just go straight across. They kind of the ones I have, the ball jars, they kind of curve out a little bit. I guess that's gonna be covered up, so it doesn't really matter. Um, they have this sort of rounded top a little bit. Okay, so then you're not going to want to draw a straight line. You're going to want to kind of curve it downward a little bit, like this. Like I said, this isn't really going to matter that much. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of come across here because you know how it has those little edges that where you screw the lid on. You don't have to draw a line straight across. Just kind of draw like two or three separate lines kind of going across here like this. Um, this is mainly going to be covered up up here, so I don't really, I'm not that worried about it. We're actually going to do the stems and the flowers before we do the highlights because you want it to look like the like it's actually in the jar. So if you draw these stems after you do the highlights and the coloring on the jar, well, it's going to end up looking like they're not actually in there. Um, you can, like what we'll do now is we'll do this like bottom green part. Um, we can do that first and then where the water line is. Um, that's really important to do now because when you put flowers in a vase or in a jar and you have the water, like when you have a, this isn't clear so you won't be able to tell, when you put 
the flower in there and you and you were viewing it from like head on when you're looking at it straight on the stem isn't going to appear perfectly straight it's actually going to magnify the stem and it's going to look a little distorted like it's going to not look straight down it'll be over a little bit i'll show you what i'm talking about when we do the stem but sorry for the little science lesson there um i just think that's really important not that this is really realistic looking but that it can be more realistic if you kind of follow the, the rules of science. If there are rules of science, there's probably not. But anyway, that's just what we're gonna do. Um, and then to make this color, we are gonna take our titanium white. It doesn't matter where you do this on your palette. Um, and we want it super, um, we want it watery. That water's fine to use even if it's not super clear because it's working with the colors we were just working with, so it doesn't really matter. We want it super watery. And the reason I'm not using blue for the water is because the reflection of the, the green from the stems is gonna show in the water. So you want it kind of tinted a little bit green. If you go look at a vase of flowers and you have green stems in there, you'll kind of notice that the water is gonna appear kind of like a green tint, not a blue tint. Okay, so that's the reasoning for the green and not blue, if you were wondering. And we're going to take the smallest amount of our grass green color and mix it in. Like the tiniest amount. Like this is probably too dark, but I would rather start... I mean, you can always go over it with white. And you do want this pretty runny as well, so just add some water to it because what we're going to be doing is is almost called a glossing it's sort of glossing in a way instead of using a, a mixing medium we're just going to be using our water um so what we're going to do is we're going to draw an oval inside of our container here we're just going to follow the lines you know what actually this isn't even dark enough now that I have the paint down, it's uh, too light. You don't want it too dark, but you don't want it too light either because then it's going to look like um, white. You don't want it to look white. Okay, so at the very bottom, this is probably going to be, well, that's probably right where we want it. If you're using this side of, size of a canvas, you're going to want about a half of an inch to, you know, one fourth of an inch. Um, and what you're going to do is you're just going to follow the line of this. We're going to be going over this with, um, with, with the highlights later. So if it's, if it's not super transparent, it doesn't matter because you can make it more transparent later. And so once you get this kind of like ovally shape, which mine should be actually way more oval than that, but that's okay. Um, I can always fix that later. Anyway, so you're going to want this sort of oval shape in here, and once you get like this, you're going to want to curve it. Um, oops, that was way too high. You want to curve it right here. This actually might, no, that's not too high. And if you make a mistake, you can, you know, you're welcome to do this with chalk, but you don't have to. Um, it's better to wipe your brush off before you put it in your water, but I'm trying to make this quicker than normal, like, usual. So like I said, just go back into your blue color. And like for me, this is way too thick for me. I want to make this like lower. I'm going to just try to go in here and sort of fix up my line a little to be a little bit smaller but not too small because then I have to redo the whole thing. And we want it pretty even. Try to make it even. And then just run your finger across there to, to blend that in with the background. Oops, a little carried away, but we can always go over our line. Okay, rinse that off because you don't want the blue on there. You want the screen. Um, 
And then you're just gonna fill this in with your green on the bottom. We are gonna put our waterline in now. Um, we're almost gonna do the same kind of um, shape, except for we're gonna go, um, it's gonna be a little bit smaller. We're gonna go probably almost half the way down, well, maybe a quarter of the way down. Um, I think I'll put my waterline. It it wherever you want to put your waterline, you can put your waterline. It doesn't really matter. So you're gonna um, use the same color, and you're gonna make almost the same shape, but except for not as um, you want the front part more rounded than the back. If that makes any sense. So. We want that rounded like that. And then for the back, you don't want it quite straight. You do want it a little rounded, but like, um, you just kind of want it rounded right there on this part. And then you're gonna wanna straighten it out a little bit. So you want it rounded right here, and then you're going to want to kind of straighten it out. So it sort of looks like this, like a, it's not really a teardrop, but it's not, I don't know what you would call that, it's not really an opal either. <laughs> I guess I'm not really sure how to explain that one. Um, and then you're just going to fill that in. Okay, so now we're going to start on our flowers. I'll tell you the colors we're going to need for those. Um, to start out with, um, yellow ochre, burnt umber. That is for the center part of our um, sunflowers. Um, and these aren't going to look like very realistic. The reason for that being is that I want these to be as easy as possible. So I kind of came up with this concept. I was watching um, a bunch of other tutorials and kind of like read online and nothing really resonated with me. It was like layer upon layer upon layer um, and it would take you forever. So I try to come up with this really like quick and easy way of doing this. And you do need a specific brush to do these petals, um, but we'll go more into that um, in a second. Um, you could probably do it with another brush, but I'm not sure how the technique would work. All right, um, you're gonna need your titanium yeah. white. Excuse, that's terrible here. Okay, what am I talking about? Okay, burnt umber. And then for the petals themselves, I you can use any yellow. I just have primary yellow here for these. Um, and this is um, primary red. And what I'm gonna do is mix these two to make an orange. So if you have an orange, just use that it would be, you know, obviously easier. And then I'm going to use the same grass green for the stem. Um, and then this titanium white, we're actually going to paint out the petals uh, before we put them on there, just so they pop more. Because if you're using cheaper paint like I am, um, it's pretty translucent. And this is a trick to get your colors to look brighter and you won't have to spend as much time laying down layer after layer of paint um even though there's a couple layers in the in the long run it's going to make it a lot easier for that color to be nice and bright and vibrant okay so let's start with the center of the sunflower um you're going to want to take this is a number 12 round you don't have to use this for the center you can use any brush for the center of it i'm just using this to make it easy it's possible on me so I don't have to keep switching brushes. Uh, you're going to want to have your brush wet and you are going to take your um, yellow ochre. Make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush and you are going to draw um, almost like a football. That's what I should have described that as. Almost like a football shape and you can place your flower wherever you like. Um, I'm probably actually going to make them bigger than I made them here because I mean sunflowers are like huge so that's not very accurate but I was just kind of playing around yesterday so 
Um, today, we're getting serious. Okay, so we're gonna wanna have this, not on this, but probably one fourth of an inch up, depending on how big of a surface you're working on. So if you're working on an eight by 10, you're gonna wanna make that according to your eight by 10, obviously, or you can do it to this scale. It really doesn't matter, I guess, if you want your, like if you did an eight by 10 and you wanted this bigger on there, which I think actually would look better if you did this size on there, that would be really beautiful. I think there's too much space up there. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's just me. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our little football shape probably right about here. Like I said, around one fourth of an inch up from your um, mason jar here. And you don't have to be too crazy accurate on this. You can kind of just, see most of our petals are covering up the center anyway. Um, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and I do have these, I will have these the painting up on my Instagram. So if you wanna look at that for a reference photo, um, I didn't do this off of a reference photo. I just, I mean, I did look at pictures of sunflowers and stuff, but, and mason jars, but I didn't have a specific reference photo. So that's why I don't have one this time. Um, so like I said, and, and it should be big. I mean, sunflowers are big. So the scale, you want this part big. And you want, um, this kind of a football shape here. And you really don't, like with this this um, yellow ochre, the color's pretty deep, I would say, so you don't actually have to, um... <laughs> my daughter's like singing. Um, you don't have to, what am I saying? I don't know. I lost my train of thought. So we're making this kind of football-y shape. Doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of slap the paint on there. I don't know, maybe I want that a little bit bigger. I want it a little bit bigger. Because I want these bigger than the, the ones I did yesterday. Like I said, it doesn't have to be like, see how this is like very sloppy looking? It, it doesn't matter right now because we are, um, we're, we're gonna be painting over it. This is really just a, a rough outline. So if you, you know, don't be like me and keep trying to fix it till it looks perfect because it doesn't matter. I just need to tell myself that it doesn't matter. We're just trying to get a nice football shape here. Um, kind of football shape, sort of. So, it's funny because the one I saw was actually kind of flat right there, but that's fine. We can just, the one I copied this off of, sort of flat right there, but that's all right. We'll just cover it up with the flowers, or the petals. So, like, if you were doing this accurately, you would kind of just have this more like flat right there. But we'll cover that up. Okay, so we have that football shape in. We can work on the next one over here. And this one, you know, I want this flower to, to be facing this way. So our football shape is actually going to be vertical, not horizontal. It's going to be vertical. Is that right? I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, so we are gonna, but this one is actually gonna be a lot better than this one. You don't want this one to be um, quite like that. So what you're gonna do is start, you know, you can start roughly around the, in the same place as you did that one. Um, so you're gonna want this football shape to be more curved on the outside than on the inside. And by what that, I mean by that is that you want this part more rounded, almost like a pregnant belly. <laughs> or, 
Or better yet, a, a backwards moon. Okay. Or backwards, maybe it's not backwards. Maybe it's the right way. So what you're gonna wanna do once you get that shape in there, you're gonna wanna, it needs to be bigger than that. So I'm gonna draw my line up higher. I still want that curved a little, but you really don't want this to be a football. You more like, um, I don't know what you would compare this to, an eye? No. A half circle? Half circle. Let's just go with half circle. And the edges don't have to be perfect. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it on there. And I'm trying to get it bigger than that one. I still kind of think these look small compared to the jar, so we can beef them up a little bit more. Um, I do like where it starts, so instead of me adding there, I'm going to add up here. So I'll just kind of, yeah, I definitely wanted that bigger. Just because sunflowers have that big, you know, they have the big center. They have those little rinky dinky centers because then you might as well be painting daffodils or whatever the heck those flowers are called. Okay, so we got that in. We dig. I don't know if that's big enough yet. Maybe that's not big enough either. Maybe we can kind of flatten this out a little bit. Let's make this bigger and flatter. So instead of that going up like that, we're going to take this out further. I'm going to fix this up a little. So I want this flatter here and then rounded more and I want it bigger. And I also want it pretty close to this one so our petals can be touching. So we'll just keep working that on over. And then we can pull it in. Yeah, see this to me is way better. Nice and big. I want our nice big flower. There. Nice big center. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lose this guy for right now for just a second. Wipe it off first, then rinse it. You don't have to change your water as often then. <laughs> like every time I start something new, I change my water. Um you should do that anyway, even if you wipe the brushes off, just so you can have nice, vibrant colors. Super important. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take, this is a three inch flat. You can use any size. I just like this um, smaller one. My daughter's up there singing like super loud. My past shit is terrible. Okay, so I'm using this um, three inch flat. Uh, and I, th I believe this is like made out of straw, kind of, it's like, just like the first one. Um, can you see that? Anyway, it's just like the first one we use, but the reason, or you could use a fan brush. You could use like a smaller fan brush like this. Um, I don't like this that much for doing the, what I'm about to do because these are not stiff enough. This brush is just too light for me. So you want a stiffer, if you have a fan brush, you want a nice stiff fan brush. Um, so what you're going to do, I mean, this is just easiest for me. So if you have something similar to this, use this. Uh, you're going to just, you're not, you don't have to get this water or anything. You're going to sort of dab it in your, um, your brown umber. What the heck is that called? Brown umber. What is this? Oh, <laughs> you're going to want to dip it into your burnt umber. Your, your brown shade, and it doesn't have to be burnt umber. Whatever brown shade you have or if you mix your own is fine. You just want a tiny bit on the tip of it. And so what you're gonna do, and it doesn't matter if it's dry or not, um, you are going to just stamp, like literally just do this. And this is the easiest way I found to make these little, um, you know, the little, I don't know what you call them. Those little things in the middle of the sunflower instead of sitting there individually taking a detail, you know, brush and making every single one, that to me is crazy. That is gonna take you forever. 
So you're just gonna just stamp these all, don't touch the center. So what we're, I'm gonna do the center first so you know what I mean. Um, if you've ever looked at a sunflower, here, we'll just take the detail brush and paint it in there so you guys don't get confused. <laughs> Even though I don't really wanna do that because I don't wanna like a line in this. Um, I'll just mix it with some, I'm gonna mix my, um, the burnt umber with the, what the hell is this called? Why do I keep yellow ochre? The yellow ochre and the burnt umber together. And I'm gonna take the detail brush and on the inside of um, our sunflower, we're gonna draw an oval. <laughs> kind of hard to do when your paint's sort of wet still. Um, oh yeah, kind of difficult. I'm just gonna have to go in with the full force brown. Uh, you're gonna want to draw a little oval on the side of this. Uh, or what you can do is take your, um, kind of looks like a donut. <laughs> take your, your little brush and dot that in instead of drawing it because it's going to look better in the end if you don't have like an actual line there. Um, but just for the sake of this tutorial to make it easier, uh, I'm going to do that. And then, so you're not going to fill this part in. You're just only going to do the brown like on this part. You can just go right over that so it's not as like sharp. Just gonna take these and just keep on stamping. And don't go like, don't overlap it too much because you want this burnt umber color to, um, you want it on there. So and that was way too much on my brush. You want it to poke through because you want these to look like the little stems. Switch paint. So just keep stamping that on there. Best you can. This, we got a little bit too much brown there, but I mean, it's fine, so no worries. Just the brown on there. And then that's good. You can kind of just leave that. You can always go over it again if you want. Um, so for this one, we can do that same thing. Uh, draw our little shape. For this one, we want to, you know, we want to do the same shape in the center here or kind of like our half moon, except where you want it rounded. You don't want those, oops, you don't want those edges like that. You don't want pointy edges. You want it round still, because that's how it is. <laughs> if you look at a sunflower. So you're gonna wanna have it like this, like just an actual oval, pretty much. All right. So now that we have that mapped in there, we can go in with our stamping. Make sure there's not too much paint on there and then just kind of go to town, making your little spots. And this does work better um, if it's dried, like this one is dried and you know, these aren't blending in with the background. So this works better if you if your uh, paint is dry. So just in case you're doing this at home, um, if you try to stamp this in, it might blend in a little too much. So just we're gonna work on our, um, our petals. And to make these, we're gonna go with our white first. Um, I didn't do that on that one, but I ended up having to go over them a couple times and I don't want to have to do that. So what we're going to do is go into our titanium white and kind of map out where we want them. So you're going to push and then you're going to lift up. 
um, on your canvas here. But this is just going to map out where we kind of want our petals. You want them in kind of like a teardrop shape. So you're going to push and lift up. Like that one's perfect. Um, it doesn't really matter if they get like wonky like that because we're going to go over them with the, with the other color. And the reason for doing this is just so that we have enough, um, you know, if you, if you put the yellow on this, they're going to kind of look more green and we want the colors super vibrant. And this will make them more opaque instead of translucent. And so these ones on the top go straight up. Um, so if you wanted like some back petals, you would do this, fill it in the gap. Um, so all of these are going straight up. And we're going to keep going straight up until you get to the edge. Maybe add some back ones, just so we can make sure our petals are big enough. So until right about here, this is where we're going to start curving them over to the side. So this little fella, once we get one in there, is going to want to go um, to the side a little bit. And this one goes straight out right there. And then these kind of start curving downward in the front. And then we'll put some going, you know, upward too. And this is also going to give us time to let this dry. So we want these ones to start curving down towards the ground. And it doesn't necessarily actually have to point at the ground. When we put in our strokes, we want to make them curved so it looks like it's going down. So just keep doing this all the way around. If you don't get that tip, you can just kind of draw it in with the tip of the brush. That's why I really like this one because it has a nice pointy tip. Okay. We'll just Put them in there. And it's okay if you get some of the brown in there, it's really not going to matter too much. And it is helpful to have more paint on your brush for this. Um, just because it's easier to make that shape and you kind of load it up a little bit with your paint. If you didn't have that, I mean, you don't want too much. Obviously, you don't want to glide it on there or else it's never going to dry. Okay, so we're going to go back up to the top and kind of start working our way over. This one looks a little funky. Maybe we'll put one here to kind of maybe down a little in there too. It doesn't look as weird. <laughs> okay, so then we're gonna start curving these going like this direction. And these don't have to be perfect because of course we're just gonna go over this with the uh, other colors. Okay, and then these actually start kind of, the one I copied it off of, kind of like just went sort of straight up a lot of them. And there's a leaf, there's a couple leaves over here, so you don't have to really worry about, you know, how it is. And then when we get here, we're going to want to start curving them going down like this. You're probably going to want to make it bigger than that, but. Curving them down. 
And then once we get here, they can go straight down again. Okay. Then we're gonna wanna make a couple um, to fill this in. And just go right on top of your round. And you want these to be super short, the ones that you put right here, because you want to still be able to see the inside of your flower. So you're not gonna make these the same way. You're really just gonna take the paint on the tip of your brush and do a little like teardrop shape like this. Really don't want that many on there, just a couple. Um, and don't worry, worry about the shape too much just because we're gonna end up going over it anyway. This is really just to let's put one little guy here, why not? Just to, you know. Okay, and then I think the green, we don't necessarily need to um, do the white for because the green will cover over this to do it just fine. Okay, so on this one, these are actually covering some of this. So we'll start on the, the top first just so it's easier, I guess, why not? Um, so we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna push and then let go. You wanna push down and then lighten up. So I'll show you right here. You push this and then you're gonna lift. Push hard and then lift as you um, get towards the top of the pedal. You wanna lighten your pressure. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. So you wanna have nice firm pressure at the bottom and light pressure as you go to the top. Like look at how perfect that came out. So you just wanna keep doing this so we got these ones here. Well, we'll add another one right here. Push down and then lift. So this doesn't matter so much because we can always go over this again if you kind of, you know, if that's not perfectly dry and you sort of mess with them a little bit, we can go back in and fix those. Um, so this one, as you can see, it kind of curves down here. This was a pretty wild um, sunflower that I copied. <laughs> Uh, so what we're going to do is for this way, this is kind of hard because I'm obviously at a different angle, but if you were, you know, straightforward, this would be a little bit easier. You're going to want to push, but then pull almost like, you know, you're drawing half of a circle, but you're going to have a nice firm, you're going to push firm and then you're going to lighten up you're going to go in a curved motion. So hopefully that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So you're going to push down and then you're going to kind of go downward. But that's hard to do because I'm at this weird angle. Okay. But I guess, yeah, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, just so you kind of have this sort of look. And if you want, if you don't like that big gap, you know, just put a petal there. I mean, I like I like how it looks, but I guess we'll just add one, why not? So we'll put another one right there. So this one right here, this is when you can just start doing it normal. Um, but you're gonna do it just like these top ones, but you're gonna do it, you know, obviously off to the side. You're just gonna push it and then lift up. And push it and lift up. Now, once we get right here, these start curving downward. You don't want to touch your paint there. And if, try to keep your hands off your canvas. I touch my canvases all the time and it's probably not the best thing to do, but whatever. <laughs> I just, I have a hard time. Like I have to rest my hand. Otherwise, like, if I don't rest my hand somewhere, like it's like if you were writing, if you were trying to write and you just had your hand floating in the air, well, it's gonna look crazy. So if you have somewhere you can rest your hand that's dry and not wet, like if this was wet, you would never put your hand in it because it would be, 
you know, you'd get paint everywhere and you'd ruin your painting. But, you know, if this is dry, I don't really, honestly, I don't think it matters if you touch it or not. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with that, but I don't really care. <laughs> so now we're going to want to start curving these down. Again, just like those ones, but not as extreme. So just, you know, push and, and lighten the load as we go down further. And this is really good practice for when we actually start adding our color. See, I'm getting really close to those and those are wet, so you have to be very careful. And if you don't get the tip you want, just take the little tip of the, the round brush and, you know, put it in there. Okay. And if you don't think your petals are big enough, you can go back in and make your petals bigger. But sunflowers don't really have that big of petals. They really have more, like, that's, you know, kind of the part that's big. The, the petals themselves are actually pretty small. Okay, now these ones are just going to kind of start going down. And just make them the same way. These two right here, you're just going to have it regular. So this is where it gets kind of, um, I wouldn't say challenging, but this is more difficult. You're going to want to make these petals so they look like they're covering this and kind of facing that way. So that can be kind of a hard thing to do, honestly. So what we're going to do right here, hopefully I'm not covering this, no I'm not. Um, well, we need one more right here, actually. We'll, we'll add one for right here, just a regular one. Kind of facing downward. Make sure there's a tip on it, though. Okay. So what you're going to do for this, we'll, we'll start right here just so we can get the main one. You're going to start um, a little bit from this, from where you have your line. And you're going to just do the same thing, but you want it to kind of curve up a little bit. You don't want to cover too much of that. So try to start, you know, pretty far over. And you're just going to make a few of these doing that, going that direction. Like, so this one right here, we're going to start it right here, but we want it to go more at an angle. And we're just going to push and then lift up. Just really easy peasy. Like this. Is there and this doesn't matter so much because we're gonna have um, a leaf right here so these were kind of funky these um, these petals they were kind of going like this way onto the sunflower and so you're gonna push and then lift up and push and lift up and now these are like that, but then when you get here, you're going to want to make sure these blend right. So you're going to want one that kind of starts pointing down. So you're going to take this and do the same thing, but sort of point it down, going down. Make sure you don't touch your white paint, then you'll get it everywhere. And so this is kind of awkward here. So we're going to want one that is sort of going at that angle. If that makes any sense like towards the bottom corner of this so you're going to do the, the same thing but you're going to push it towards the bottom thing right there um, and then you can kind of you can add them in where you think you need them like right here i'm like oh i probably want one right there i want that bigger because i don't think it looks right or whatever okay so now that we have these in white we, these have to be dry. You cannot go over this with yellow because then it's going to make them too light. So you're going to clean this up. You're going to either wait for those to dry or you're going to blow dry them. I'm going to blow dry them on our actual petals. Um, you're going to want to make your little orange color here by mixing in your yellow and your uh, red, whatever red you choose to use. I just use primary because it's um, not as it's not as pigmented. 
So I just want a nice bright orange. See, really beautiful, bright orange, very fall like. Okay, so just wipe off that. You're gonna want your brush clean from that because what we're gonna do. This is how we're going to make our petals. And this is how I discovered that, you know, this is an easy way of doing this. Make sure all of this is dry. Okay. Make sure that white is completely dry. You're going to take half of your brush, like one half of it and dip it into your orange. So it's only covering half of your brush. See, it's not on both sides just on one side. Then you're gonna take the opposite side of your brush and you're going to dip it into your yellow. So you have one side yellow and one side orange. And you're gonna take it where the two meet, not on, not on the orange side and not on the yellow side. You're gonna take it where these two little colors are kissing. <laughs> and you're gonna go over the white that we did. So you're just gonna push down and lift up. And this is the easiest way I found of making these. Otherwise, you're gonna have to draw an outline, you're gonna have to do an orange, and then you're gonna let it dry, and then you're gonna go with the yellow, and then you're gonna let it dry, and then you're gonna go have to go back. This way, you just do that, and it's gonna make the little petal for you. Um, you should be able to get a couple petals out of each, um, of each dip, I guess I could say. Um, so just, you know, right wherever you did your white, just go right on over it and make your little petals. And it, it's okay if you don't, you know, if the colors mix, that's the point. Uh, kind of looks like fire, kind of fun. Anyway, so just keep doing this where you made them and just you know, keep it in the same, going the same way. And if you have little, you know, the little tips of white sticking out, we can just go back over that or just cover it up. You can just keep dipping into the thing. See, so this, and then you're just gonna go all the way around. Just keep making your little petals. Just how it, you know, push down and then lift up. That's how we did it on the other one. Push down and lift up. Push down and lift up. And if you have a little bit peeking through, just cover it up. <laughs> just take one of, you know, the yellow or the orange and just cover it up. So right now we're just gonna worry about getting all of these covered with our paint orange and then our yellow on the one side just like this yep, just keep on filling it in push down lift up and since you have that white under there, we really should only have to go over this like once or maybe, you know, maybe, you know, just a couple spots where we have our little edges hanging out. But other than that, you're really only going to have to go over this once. Push down, lift up, push down, lift up. This one is the third one, lift up. Push down, lift up. And if you don't get those little tips perfect, you can just, you know, just go back in and and just fill it in with the um, the tip of the... And it's okay if these look a little whimsical, if they don't have perfect tips. 
that's the point of the painting. It's supposed to be fun and whimsical. It's not like totally realistic. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm really into impressionism. I, I'm not a realism type of artist. I mean, some things I do are, but mostly this is just, you know, something fun. <laughs> so you don't have to get too caught up if your petals aren't perfectly shaped or, you know, it's just to have fun. Okay, so now we're going to do some of these little inside ones that we made. And you want to make sure um, you get all that white covered. That's the most important thing is to have all this white covered. You see the white? Got to cover it up. You can't have any of that white hanging out. Any, even in the inside here, like if you have see that white showing through, go over it with your paint. I mean, it doesn't matter how you how it gets done, just cover it up. This we want to cover that. So. I mean, you should see how long this took not doing the white. I, I mean, I did get it done relatively fast, but I had to do a couple layers to get this covered up. And so see here, we don't really have to do that many layers. We just really just do one and make sure all the white's covered up. So look, we're already done with that. So we're gonna start on the other one, just the same way. And that's a lot of paint though. It's way too much. I mean, it, you should have a little bit more paint on here than normal just because um, otherwise it's, it doesn't really seem to work very well and the color isn't as intense. If you had a round brush that was stiffer, I think it would work like magnificent. I, could, I think it'd be wonderful. Um, Yeah, so see how fast that goes on? Awesome. And if you want to add a little more orange or a little more yellow, um, you can. Like I might want a little more orange on this one. So I'll take my orange and maybe I want it on the tips or on the bottom of these. See, and so the, you can go ahead and add that in on the bottom like that and have the, you know, the top of it. But see how fast it goes? Like when you add that on there, super easy peasy. If you wanted to do something like that, just, you know, and then if you want to add your little yellow, add more yellow on the top. You can just go in there really quick. Make sure all the white's covered up. Go in with your yellow and see, look how fast that is. Quick and easy and fun and it's awesome. So that's all pretty much covered up. Explore. There's some right over here that needs to be covered up more. These. It's, it really is very important that you get all that um, that that white covered up. So just like here, if you wanted to add more yellow on the tips of these, just go through and just add some yellow on the tips. And even if you didn't like the t how these tips were formed, you could go even go back in with your white and fix those up too if you wanted to. I don't want to because I don't really like. I think it's fun, so I want it to be like fun like this. And like these ones are going down further, but you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be the same every time. <laughs> it can be a little bit different. Why not? Maybe I'll go in with my orange on these ones on the bottom, give them more dimension. See? I mean, you want it to like kind of, maybe gives it a more like fall vibe if you add more orange. See, and you can just go like really easy, easy, and kind of 
do that. These ones are sort of moving a little bit, the ones inside here. So maybe we'll take a lot of our yellow and kind of add it on the tip so we can tell that these are going up. Like impressionism. That's why, you know, the, the darker bottom and the lighter top, it's going to give you the impression that that's the way that the um, petal is going. Like this one, we want to make sure that we have our, our white colored up. Nice tip. Like on the bottom here of this one, we want to wipe off some of that paint. You don't want to get too much paint on your brush either. We want this darker right here because we want, you know, we want to know that this one's going right there. This one's coming around right here, so we're in dark right there. Almost like a shadow, but not really a shadow. Anyway, so that's we're pretty much done with that. We don't have to keep working on those. So I think they look beautiful. I mean, they're a little bit sloppy, but the thing is, is that if this is for a beginner, it takes so long to sit and form all of those petals. This is going to be nice, quick, and easy, like I said. So now we're going to work on the stems, and the stems are super easy as well. You're just going to take your... We're going to make these the same way we made the petals, except for um, with green and... Um, we're gonna make the stems before we make the leaves though. And I actually probably gonna add a couple more um, leaves on this one than I did on that one. And you don't have to do any tracing or anything with this. You know, you don't have to do chalk. It's pretty easy, it's pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center of our sunflower. Well, at least we like to think it's a sunflower. It may not actually look like one. <laughs> and we're going to take where these two meet, where the yellow meets the green, and we're going to place that flat against the canvas and like right where the center is. And we're going to just go straight down, right over our mason jar. It doesn't matter because we're going to go right back over this and that's why we waited to do our highlights. And we're going to go down to where the water is. Um, this is the back of the water, so we're going to go like in, see where this is, down to this point. And this is where our, you know, right where this line is, is where our flower is going to start getting a little bit um, distorted. Or the stem, I should say, not our flower. I'm going to make sure we have enough yellow. Our yellow Green Bay Packers colors for... Those of you who know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and we're going to do the same thing, except for we're going to take this and we're going to push it over a little bit. Like we're going to go this way. Like we're not going to go straight down. We're going to take it and move it over just a tiny bit. We're going to push down. And we're going to go over this so it doesn't look so dark. Um... Make sure I'm losing my yellow a little bit. Guess it doesn't really matter because we don't want this super dark down here anyway. Okay. So we're going to keep going all the way down to the bottom and do this. So now this is where it's going to be kind of weird. You can take your finger or a clean brush and kind of just like go like this a little bit. You know that seems really weird, but um, I'm going to tap some of that off. That's way too much paint. We're going to kind of, oops, that was a little too much, do that. And then if you lose the line too much, just go back over it, over the stem. Um, so you want it to kind of look like a little bit faded, is what I'm trying to say. And this is going to give you a more realistic look to it. I mean, even though it's not, it's not realistic at all, but, you know, try to get this up to, you know, where it needs it so there's no gaps. All right, so this is how you're going to do that. And now the other stem, we're going to do the same thing. 
that this water right here is way too muddy. If you were painting this for yourself, you'd want to switch out your water because the, the dirtier your water is, the more muddy your painting is going to look. You're not going to have these really beautiful bright colors. And so muddy water means a muddy painting. Okay, so we want to make sure we have enough both color on there. Make sure I have enough yellow and enough green and that they meet right there. And you're going to take that part of your brush and you're going to push it down flat. You're going to find this, I imagine, would probably, if this wasn't curved up by leaves and everything, it would probably be curved, right? You can imagine that the stem would be curved right there. But since we um, aren't going to see that, we're just going to take it from like this point right here. And I actually want this to be sort of at an angle like this. So let's pretend, let's pretend that it's going out and it's curved a little. So our stem is going to be right about here. I'm just going to do the same thing. This one needs way like, further down, but that's not really, that looks a little weird. <laughs> so we're going to redesign it a little bit which is fine. And these two are going to cross over each other. Um, just make sure I kind of want this one in front. So I'm not really gonna, I'm going to try to make this one look more like it's in the background. So, and, and sunflowers have a pretty thick stem. So it's okay to push a little bit on these, to push hard on them. Probably should have had the yellow on the other side, but that's all right. So we have it and it's going to stop right about here and then it's going to kind of curve down here. Okay. Boy, I really only have that on the yellow. Okay, so this is hitting the edge of our jar. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to like run our finger over this a little bit. Um, you do want a hard edge somewhere. So like, it looks like our hard edge on this one is kind of on this side, which it actually should be on the other side since it's hitting the side of the jar. So we're gonna switch that. So you're gonna want sort of a hard edge, like somewhere on this because, um, so you can tell it's a stem still and not just water. I'm like, I can't get that. I'm just going to take my little detailer and do it. And then that. This is really dark right here, so it's hard to see it. Um, but that's okay. We can kind of just leave it how it is. And then this up here is going to be a leaf, so I'm not worried that that stem looks super you know, flimsy right there. Um, yeah. And this is sort of where it breaks, so we can kind of draw that a little bit. We want to make sure we can tell that that's where it goes into the water. And then it sort of breaks right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our leaves the exact same way. We're going to take I'm going to wash this off first because I have too much paint on there. We're going to take half of our yellow and half in our green. So you have half and half just the same way. And we're going to start making our leaves. And we're going to do them just like our petals. We're going to like push the tip and then we're going to lift up. Oh my God, that was so wet. Why was this so wet? 
We don't want any water running down this. If your brush is too wet, um, it will not work. So you want almost, I mean, you don't want a dry brush, but you don't want it super wet. So we'll do that again. And I'll probably just dig that out. Okay, so you want half with the green and half with the yellow. And you're gonna push and lift up. And it doesn't have to be perfect and you can go back over it again if you need to. Okay, so it kind of looks like I have one sort of, well, I don't really want one right there. I don't think I like that. Um, we're gonna make one right about here. We'll make a couple right here actually. We're gonna push down and then lift up. Half green, half yellow. And we're gonna push down and lift up. And if you don't like the tip of it, just sort of fix it. I just want a couple of, you know, leaves in here to so it looks nice. Okay, so a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. And put one, let's put one right here. Push down and lift up. I kind of like where these ones are, so push down and lift up. And like I said, if they're not perfect, we can go back in and kind of fix them up a little bit. One right here. Okay. We have like the footprint of our, our leaf kind of mapped out here. Sort of just. You know, if you want them bigger, make them a little bit bigger. This one, yeah, this can stand to be bigger for sure. Kind of fix it up a little bit there. And then if you have like these sort of sparse areas where you don't have anything, um, you know, you could just fill that in by adding more of these or you can work on the these. highlights on this. So you're going to take the same brush or if you want to, you can take this, um, this one. Doesn't really matter. Actually, maybe we'll use this so we get a better line, just in case. Um, make sure it's clean. <laughs> Whatever you do, make sure that brush is nice and clean. So this is how we're gonna do this. We're gonna take our water and make this super transparent again. My hair is like stuck in this paint somehow. You want super duper transparent. You don't want any like Harsh things of white. Like, if you mix that, wipe it off. Just to make sure you don't have any white paint on your brush. And you're gonna take that where it soaks into the cardboard. If you're using cardboard, actually, it already did. So I'm gonna have to redo that. You have to be super fast if you're doing this. Wipe that off. I am as you can. Okay. And so you're gonna take that mixture of like you almost want this to be like translucent. And you're going to go, okay, so we're going to do the top of this first. This obviously they don't look exactly the same, but I didn't want them to. Um, you're going to do the, the top of this. So we're going to make our light reflecting. And here, I'll kind of show you the shape that we're going for. You want it like rounded. You want to follow the shape of this. Um, bottle to make it look like it has that nice rounded edge. So once we get to this water, I'm going to show you um, what we're going to do for that. So we really want to make sure there's not too much in there. And if you want to add a little bit of yellow to this, I kind of like that look. That's what I did on this one, but this one I'm not going to do that because I want to get my I just don't want to do that. <laughs> so you want to, you know, follow that shape, put a couple different highlights on there just so you can tell that, you know, the bottle is rounded like that. Okay, so once we get to this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to follow this. Just like that. 
So we, we can tell that it's rounded in that shape. You don't want that harsh line, so you can go over it with your finger if it got too harsh. Like this. So you just kind of follow the shape that you made of the outside of the bottle to do that. Um, this, that's not dry. So bring that I'm gonna dry that. right over the green. Um, you're gonna take your white, add your water, same thing. Make sure you don't really have any paint paint on the brush. Um, and you're gonna take that really watery mixture and until you get in the center, you're gonna keep kind of going in that same motion. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go like at an angle and then curve it down. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of go like this and then you're gonna curve it straight, you know, around. Just so you get that kind of optical illusion. So this leaf is obviously hanging over, so you wouldn't wanna do this over that leaf. You're going to want to start under the leaf and go, you know, Can I grab the nail? Yeah, go ahead and go like this way. And then once you get to the water, you're going to want to stop. Yeah, that was way too bright, so let's go over that with our finger. So see how that kind of gives like the illusion that the bottle is sort of shaped that way? Um, and then the outside of these, we're going to, oh, shoot. We're going to go, not for the really bad idea, um, we're going to go over with a mixture of like the green and the white. Um, but for this right here, we can make a really, really, really thin out um, white. Even just go over it with a wet brush, just a little bit, it's like damp, not like wet, but like damp. And go in the same sort of motion, like to cover up the rest of it. Maybe add a little bit of paint, so. Cause you don't want, I mean, you want it to look like these are um, in glass. So you want like a little bit of a tint, but you don't want to go like wild with it and you don't want to take away what you did. So, to get that kind of like, you know how it sort of has like that, when you look at like one of these, you can kind of see a highlight going across right here. You can take the white, super thinned out. Okay, bye baby. And in sort of the same Gorby's curve, okay, I'm gonna go across. You're not gonna cover up where you did that and go across like this. Just so you can see that highlight, you know, you know, kind of like if it was real life and you could see how that was curved right there. And you kind of just blend it in with your finger a little bit. See how it kind of gives that illusion? Kind of fun. Well, I don't know if it's fun, but <laughs> fun to me, maybe not fun to you. So then if you lost some of those, you can go back over it. Kind of how you did the same. Go at the angle and then go down. Go at the angle and then go down. Angle, go down. There. So then once we get to like the water part, this is where we're going to actually tint this. Um, we're going to tint the color with our green. You take literally just like the smallest amount of green, like this, like just like the tip of a pin. And then we'll take some of our, we'll do it over here though. And so we want this color tinted with this green. This Now this is actually gonna be super important that you wipe off your brush because you don't want any of that green paint sneaking up on you and making a big green streak inside of your, rinse off your brush. And you're gonna add a bunch of water to this, just the same. You want lots of water. Um, and we're just gonna kind of be like, um, 
That might be too green, I don't know. Let's just test a little spot. Uh, that might be fine. We're gonna go and do the same thing where our highlights were just exactly the same and keep going all the way down like these continued all the way down the bottle. This might be a little much. That's okay though. So then this is gonna give you the illusion that the color of the water, you know, is tinted. And so wherever these highlights were, you're just gonna carry them all the way down the bottle. You can, I mean, you can break them up a little bit. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but I kind of like, you know, if you saw that highlight in real life, it'd probably go all the way. And then once you get over here, you do want to curve them. So it kind of gives that shape a little, like if you, you know, like this. You're going to want to curve these a little. So you kind of carry on with that same shape. And those might actually be a little bit dark, but we're going to go over it again with the, um, the just the water in that. Um, We had one right, like here, we'll put a highlight, and then get our other one. You want to make sure you start these at the water. You don't want them, like I said, you don't want them above the water mark because then it's going to look weird. So that's kind of how you want to do that. Um, this is a little harsh, so we want to kind of try to make that line a little bit lighter from the watermark. Um, you could just add in some white and go over this with white. And once it dries, it will uh, get a little more opaque. Go over it with your finger so it's not so, so it's not too opaque. You don't want to ruin all that work you did, but you don't want it that green. It's too much. The line's too harsh. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna like super, super thin it out. Um, I would actually let this dry a little bit and then go over it. Part, make sure it's still green. Don't want it white, you want it green-ish tint. Important to have that nice green tint. Um, you want it super, super runny. Really, really runny. Make sure your brush doesn't have any paint on it and then pick that back up and then kind of just go over it lightly. Just so you can tell there, there's water in there. For water, quote unquote. And then if you, you know, your highlights get a little bit messed up, just go back, um, go back over them. So now, do now is go over the edge of this with the green and the white mixture. It can be a little more, um, thick just so it shows up it does you don't want it super thick though um usually you want like a hard edge and um, a soft edge but you know we don't really have to since this is kind of just a fun one So having this go like on the outside of where you have your the bottom mark kind of helps it look more um, three dimensional. If that makes any sense. I don't really think it did, but yeah. So usually you'd have a soft edge and a hard edge, and to get that we can actually just go over it. Um, 
We'll go over it with our the finger. You don't want these covering these leaves. <laughs> so if you go over the weave for this time, just kind of brush it off. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll kind of add a little bit of highlights on these so they're not super white. And we're gonna write where it says um, fall on here. And you're gonna need your detail brush for this. You can take just straight white or you can mix in either your green or your blue. I did blue on here, but I'll probably do more of the green just so you can see it a bit better. Um, just a little bit though, I, I want it mainly white so it stands out. So, probably don't want this too wet, but I think it's probably safe. We're gonna start, um, I think we actually lost too much of that leaf, but or that stem, but that's okay. Oh, you know what I realized? Oh no, we want that over there. Okay. All right, so we will start. Oh look, this one isn't a bottle jar, but. Right about here. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. And we'll start with this curve on the B. Kind of goes that. And you can always go, if this is like too bright, you can always go over it with, um, you can go over it with like that lighty turquoise color. So we're just going to make our B right now. I mean, the easiest thing to do would just kind of just copy what you see, um, what you, like if you can look at my painting, um, just copy how the lettering is or look at an actual mason jar and just copy the lettering that way. Or if, even if, if you don't want to write this on here and you're not good at doing the letters, I'm not very good at letters. Um, So then just don't do it, but. And this is a lot easier if this is like completely dry. So you just wanna make the B, it's kind of like the shape that it is in. I don't know if this is like World English or whatever you call it. <laughs> It's like kind of a cursive B, it's not really a cursive B, it's just like a fancy B. I'm going to try to keep this pretty thin too because the, the lettering isn't very thick on the, um, on the jar. Okay. And then I noticed that it kind of goes up um, on the actual jar. I didn't really do that on mine. Last night, I just kind of just made it however, <laughs> just wrote it in cursive, so you can kind of do it like however you want to make it going up. It's easier if you can get the paint where it will just sort of glide. So you don't have to keep dipping in. Okay, yeah, so you don't have to stop in the middle of the letter. And then it kind of like curved up. And then, so this is weird how it does this. It curves up like right here and then it like swings like back around and like it meets the B. Like it like does this. You wanna try to be as light as possible with your 
um, line so it's not too thick. Yeah, it kind of like does this. Back this is our final painting. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial on our fall um, sunflower and mason jar. Anyway, just if you um, painted along with me, please send me your paintings on social media um, at Love Pray Paint on Twitter or Instagram or even Facebook. I have all of it linked. Followed along with this, just yeah, please send me your paintings. I'd love to see like the final product. Please uh, like and share this video. Subscribe to me if you haven't, if you like doing painting tutorials or like to just see um, kind of painting videos in general. Sometimes I, I did a vlog last week, sometimes I do hauls. Anyway, so just keep hanging out with me. And starting in September, I will be doing um, live painting tutorials. I'm not sure what day yet, but we will work that out then. Um, and most likely they will be in the morning. So once again, thanks for hanging out with me and have an awesome, beautiful day. Thank you. Want to destroy my <laughs> Whoa, 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 hold his hand.